Hello everyone, my name is Pegah Nikbacht Bide. I'm a PhD student from Lund University, Sweden. And I'm going to present my paper for Chochotaj, which is inline software network protocol translation for TLS or DTLS. First, I would like to start with the introduction. In IoT, uh, different networks or applications use uh, dedicated and incompatible protocols. And in IoT devices are increasingly expected to communicate in machine to machine pattern. In IoT communication among devices or between devices and backend systems that use incompatible protocols are enabled through protocol translation. Now I would like to describe a little bit background on existing solutions for protocol translation in IoT. Another term that is often used instead of uh, protocol translation in IoT is interoperability, and it's defined as the capability of heterogeneous IoT devices and applications to communicate with each other and exchange data or services. In TCP IP layered network model, interoperability is performed at different layers. At lowest layer, we have physical layer that is responsible for physical transmission. Then we have network layer that is responsible for routing and packet forwarding. At these two layers, protocol translation is done with the help of a physical network gateways. They are intermediate components that place between endpoint devices and they can perform one-to-one -one protocol translation. But their drawbacks are that they do not scale and they require to have special hardware connectors in the network. And this can increase complexity and overhead in the network. On the upper layer or application layer, usually protocol translation is done with the help of middleware or proxies. Middleware use special technologies and connecting middleware risk further reducing interoperability by locking the applications to the specific technology that they are using. Interception proxies are an alternative in the application layer, but proxies can cause delays in the network since the whole network traffic needs to be uh, translated through proxies even when the translation is not required. Another solution to perform protocol translation is the use of protocol translators. They are intermediate components that perform direct protocol to protocol translation, and they can be placed at different layers in the TCP IP layered network model. And depending on where they actually perform this translation, they are either cloud backend translators or middle boxes. In cloud backend, the traffic is rerouted to the cloud backend system for translation and they support translation or over secure network communication by terminating the TLS connection in a single centralized unit. And they can be middle boxes. Middle boxes are hardware or software based components that place on communication path between the endpoints. And they uh, do not support encrypted network traffic, but there are some solutions to circumvent this limitation that rely on deploying trusted certificates to unprotected devices on the network path, but this can increase attack surface. And middle boxes can increase communication latency between endpoints and introduces a single point of failure. I reviewed the existing solutions or approaches for protocol translation in IoT in the previous slide. And as you can see, they are unfit to address scalability, latency, and security requirements of emerging deployment technologies, especially in IoT. To address these challenges, we designed Chochotaj. Chochotaj is an efficient protocol translation that perform translation at the application layer. We have chosen application layer because it has the, the highest impact on application performance. Chochosaj is an efficient and a secure protocol translator and it address the above challenges that I mentioned. It builds on earlier technologies such as SDN or software defined networking, trusted execution environment and TLS interception. 
telesis interception is enabled with the use of TEs or trusted execution environments. These environments provide confidentiality and integrity with the use of isolated execution environments. Chochotage is flow specific. It's an on-demand protocol translator. And in that translator boxes are created by software switch on demand in the network. One of the used technologies that I mentioned uh, we use in our architecture is SDN or SDN networking. But what is SDN? In SDN, network intelligence is logically centralized and it abstracts the network infrastructure from network application. One of the main components of SDN is SDN controller, and, and it has a global view over the network and can decide what suits best for the network. In SDN, OpenFlow is usually used to link the controller and other components in the network, such as suites. Uh, and uh, OpenFlow is compatible with both software-based switch and hardware-based switch. But in Chochotage, we used OpenV switch or OVS, which is a software-based switch. OVS implements packet forwarding on data bath. It's a flow-based switch and flows are installed in a cache level structure. It has two caches that are called microflow and megaflow cache. For each arriving packet, the data path consults the caches and forwards the packet to the destination if it finds a match. But for each cache miss, the data path issues an opcall and forwards the packet to the OBS switch daemon so that they can, the packet can be processed there. Now I would like to explain our designed architecture for Chochotage. We have different components in our architecture, such as clients that are IoT devices, and we have server or backend systems. The clients are communicating to the servers through the switch that is OpenV switch in our architecture. And here you can see the components of OpenV switch, such as microflow cache and megaflow cache and others. On the top, we have a SDN controller that controls and configures the whole network. The components that we add in our architecture are a verifier network function, a certificate, authority and trusted execution environments and also translator boxes inside these TEEs. I will explain the communication between these uh, components in more detail in the uh, following slide. So here, as you can see, a translator box is instantiated whenever the translation action is triggered by a new network flow table rule. And depending on the implementation, these translator box are instantiated internally, uh, which is internal to the switch or externally. External uh, translator boxes are instantiated by the SDN controller. Translator boxes are deployed inside the TE, as you can see in the picture to ensure execution, isolation, confidentiality, and integrity of the process packet data. After creation of these translator boxes, a verifier network function uh, needs to attest the integrity and authenticity of the translator boxes. Then a certificate authority, uh, which is a authority network function, provisions the cryptographic artifacts that are necessary for intercepting the TLS communication between the endpoints. And finally, the packet can be translated inside these translator boxes. And after translation, they can be sent to the server or their final destination. One of the features of our architecture is TLS interception. For TLS interception, we use METLS protocol extension. Uh, we use METLS inside the translator boxes. METLS allows delivering session key materials to translator boxes inbound, and it does not require any additional communication or round trips. METLS is compatible with uh, TLS version 1.3, and it uses Finnish messages for two goals. 
One is for endpoint authentication. For that, it adds or it includes an HMAC inside the, the handshake messages. And the other one is for translator box negotiation with the other endpoints. For, tra for translator box negotiation inside the client finished or server finished message, it adds or it includes a middle box list or a translator box list. And this list specify the translators that are involved in each direction of the network path. For example, the, the direction from client to the server or the direction from server to the client. And then METLS uses uh, another message that is called the session key distribution message. This message is sent by the endpoint endpoints to the translator boxes on the communication path. It's an uh, application data message, not a handshake message anymore. And the record field contains the session key materials that are required by the translator boxes to compute the session key. The other feature of our architecture is protocol, protocol translation. Once a translator box inside the enclave or TE rece receives a packet from the respective flow, it decrypts the packet using the session key material that was computed from the key share that's received from uh, the certificate authority inside the network controller. The translator box parses the decrypted packet and extracts the application data. It formats the packet into the destination protocol format, and the formatted packet is re-encrypted and returned to the switch so that it can be forwarded to its final destination. Here, I would like to explain our operation flow uh, in more details, as I mentioned earlier, in our architecture, we have different components such as client, switch, controller, translator box C that performs translation on the flow from client to the server, translator box S that performs the translation for the flow from server to the client and the server. In the first step, the client initiates a session by sending a TCP scene message to the server, this packet arrives at the switch and the switch match the packet against the entries in uh, microflow cache. If no match is found, the search continues to the mega flow caches. And finally, in open flow flow tables, where it matched the translation policy that was defined by the uh, network administrator. And then the return result uh, will be stored inside the microflow cache, inside the switch. Then the switch triggers the controller to instantiate a translator box. Immediately after that, the scene packet can be forwarded to the server. At the step five and six, the controller instantiates two translator boxes, translator box C and S inside trusted execution environment, attest their trustworthiness with the verifier, and provision the key shares that was generated by the certificate authority or PKG, which is called a private key generator in our architecture. And finally, the SYNAC reply from the server can be sent to the client. At this point, the transport session is established. Then the TLS negotiation starts with the METLS protocol extensions. The client TLS request includes implicit version negotiation and it's forwarded to the server. The server response again uh, follow the METLS or TLS 1.3 specification. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, it additionally specified the identifier of the server translator box inside the finish message. Then the client can start sending encrypted application data and they are going to be processed by the translator box C. At this point, both of the translator uh, boxes uh, can obtain their session key materials from the session key distribution message and they can generate uh, the session key using their shared secrets. And finally, the server returns the application data encrypted with the uh, TLS session key. The translation of this communication or the application data continues for the remainder of the TLS session 
and the later when the flows are cleared from the switch, uh, caches of the translator boxes can be terminated. Now I would like to explain our implementation and implementation details. We implemented Chochotage and we have done the translation uh, for two popular IoT protocols, uh, CoAP and HTTP. Our implementation uh, includes the following components. We had an HTTP client, a CoAP server, OpenV switch or OVS as the switch uh, for the SDN controller. We used the real open source SDN controller. We have a translator box and a T. For T or trusted execution environment, we ported the protocol translator to an Intel SGX enclave using the Oclom library OS. Oclom is a memory safe library OS for Intel SGX. As I mentioned earlier in our architecture, uh, the translator boxes uh, can be instantiated either internally or externally. In our implementation, uh, the SDN controller deploys the Intel SGX enclave with the translator code and attests it. So in our implementation, uh, we have decided to choose external T is because deploying, managing, and debugging external translators are easier. Attestation can be done locally or remotely. Uh, but in our implementation, we used local attestation. This is because SCN controller and translator box both exist on the same platform, and that's why we used local attestation. And Intel SJX is a process-based TE, but uh, uh, in, in the implementation, other TEs, such as virtualization-based TEs, can be also used. But we used Intel SJX, which is a process-based TE. And here you can see our test bed. Our test bed consists of client, server, real controller, and the translator box. Our test bed is compatible with the different pairs of clients and servers. In our test bed, OBS or OpenV switch was installed on the host OS, and the, the different containers are connected to the OBS via one bridge that is called VR zero in this picture. And these containers are connected through their own virtual interface uh, to this bridge. Whenever a flow needs to be translated, Ryu SDN controller create an attest and SJX enclave inside container tree. And the translation is done inside this container or inside the enclave inside this container. And the flow to be translated is uh, afterwards, go through this container and finally it will be sent to its actual destination or to the server. In order there to evaluate the performance of our uh, architecture, we have done several th tests. In the first test, we send packet batches of different sizes, for example, 100,000 and 10,000 packets and measured translation and transmission time uh, for the whole batch. For example, the time between sending the first packet until sending the last packet and receive the reply. We have uh, measured uh, the translation and transmission time with using SJX and without using SJX. And as you can see in the figures, when we use SJX for the translation, uh, the translation and transmission time is a slightly increased. And also the translation and transmission time uh, will be increased when the number of packets are increased. In the second test, we send batches of 100 packets with different sizes. For example, uh, the size of 128 to 512 bytes. And we again measure the translation time and transmission time. Uh, once with SJX and the other time doing the translation without SJX. And as you can see, when SJX is enabled, uh, both the translation and transmission times are slightly increased. And as you can see, the packet length 
does not affect the translation or transmission time, and they are almost equal for uh, different sizes. And finally, the conclusions. In our paper, we proposed Chochotage. It's an inline application layer protocol translator with transport layer security. It relies on some of the existing technologies such as TLS interception. It's an efficient protocol translation. It, it has a fault tolerant distributed architecture. Uh, it's a scalable and the scalability is guaranteed by the growing number of translator boxes whenever the number of flows are increased in the network. The translator boxes are instantiated by individual software network switch in the deployment. We evaluated our architecture with Intel Strix, and as you can see, um, with the uh, with Strix, there is an, a slightly increase in the translation and transmission time. But this overhead depends on the choice of TE in the implementation of the architecture. Thank you for your attention.